going ahead. So just bringing your knees just to a comfortable kind of distance apart from one another. Big toes together to touch at the back of the mat. And then just walking our hands forward, resting our head down. Just coming into your child's pose. So maybe just for these first couple of breaths, you're gonna close down the eyes. You're gonna do a quick scan of the body. Feeling it out, seeing how, how it's doing today. Making sure when you're scanning your body, you're not just thinking about it from a physical side, but also a mental side. So what thoughts are kind of buzzing around your head today? What thoughts do you want to try and put to the side during class today? slowly starting to increase your inhales and your exhales just at your own pace so maybe inhaling for five exhaling for five just allowing your breath to just really fill up your whole body knowing that the breath that you cultivate at the start of this class is going to be with you the whole way through your practice and you can tap back into that breath that deep long breath at any point With every inhale, we're feeling our belly expand down towards our legs. With every exhale, our hips are maybe sinking slightly further down towards our feet. And just taking stock of the intention of this idea of enjoying the journey that you're taking. And knowing that the very end of the journey is not always where you want to get to. You want to enjoy the path to get to it. And knowing that the path can take any turn. And just appreciating wherever you are in it. Just taking another couple of breaths in this first posture just to really get yourself set up for practice. If you have any other personal intentions that you want to run through in your mind to set yourself up, you're welcome to. And then your next exhale, just letting go a sigh out the mouth. And then slowly in your next inhale, you're just going to bring yourself up just to a comfortable seated position. And I'm just going to talk through a little bit of um, wrist and shoulder stability that's going to be quite key in class today. Um, so there's three things I want you to think about. So any time in class that we come on to our hands like this, so whether it's cat cow, down dog, we're maybe twisting, we're in a plank or whatever, I want you to think about these three things. So if you want to even just bring your hands down to the mat now and I'll talk you through it. So fingers should be like dinner plates. You want to make them as wide as possible. You think the smaller the surface area of your hands, the less unstable. It's just like walking in high heels versus trainers. Let's make our hands like a pair of trainers. So making your hands really wide and then imagining you could open a jar. So you're opening your jar with your right hand to the right and the left hand to the left. And that is going to cause your elbow to then turn around so that our biceps are facing forward. So we want to think number one, our biceps, we want our biceps to be facing forward and our shoulder blades are going to wrap in. So our shoulders are really stable here. The next thing I want you to think about is your weight distribution in your hands. So if you think about your hands, you've got this lovely meaty bit here underneath your thumb. Meanwhile, on our pinky side finger, it's unstable. So thinking about bringing our weight distribution into our index finger and our thumb. So that's our second one, our weight distribution. And then you want to think about the palm of your hand is almost like a suction cup. So if you place your hands on the mat at the minute, and then if you imagine you could suction cup up the groins, if you could claw the mat into your hands, 
you'll notice that your fingertips will go white and you'll really start to grip onto the mat. So now if we think about that suction cup action, our weight into our thumbs and that turning, as if, like I said, you're turning jars open, your biceps are gonna come forward and you've got a really solid base. So those three things, I'll, I'll say it through class as well, but those three things, anytime we're on our hands, that's what we wanna think about. So before we come onto our hands, just wanna kind of do a little bit of wrist warming up. So we're just gonna flip our fingers that are pointing towards our knees. And we're just going to slowly lean our weight back. So we want to keep our palms on the ground for this one. We're getting into our wrists and then we'll start to lift them off in a couple of seconds so we get into our forearms. So we are on our hands and our wrists a lot in yoga. So we want to make sure we keep our wrists nice and healthy. And then just letting yourself go a bit deeper this time, lifting the palms off so you get a nice stretch along the inner seam of our forearms. And then placing our hands so that they're off our mat and the fingers are pointed away from each other. We're just going to keep our arms straight. We're just going to slide from side to side. Just getting a little bit of stretching on the inner arm as well. We're also working into those wrists. And then this time, palms are going to face up and our fingers are going to face back towards our knees. So you might have a bit of a bend in your elbow here. That's absolutely fine. And again, just leaning slightly back, just really slowly letting that weight distribution fall back a bit. Trying to keep your thumbs and all, so I'd say four fingers, we have eight, your thumbs and your eight fingers on the mat. And then just coming up, just sitting on our heels, just going to clasp our fingers together. We're just going to do a couple of circles, maybe do really little ones, make them bigger. And then doing some weaves. And then we're going to bring our hands above our head. And you're going to pretend like you've got water on your fingers. And we're just going to flick our fingers. You want to do it as fast as you can. Keep going. You might feel like you can't go any faster. Try and go faster. Four. Three. Two. One. And let it go. So coming back onto our all four, so we're on our hands, we want to think about those three key things. And we're going to do some cat cows, but I want you to move with the breath. So taking our full inhale and our full exhale to come into the pose. So on an inhale, dropping the belly down, lifting the tailbone up, lifting your gaze, letting your chest drop down, collarbones away from one another. And then on your exhale, tucking it in, pushing the ground away protracting our shoulder blades, sending them away from one another, then inhale coming back through and just going through a couple of rounds of this on your own breath. If you come through and you kind of want to stay in a pose for a breath or two, you're welcome to. And we, when we come into our angry cat back, really think about pushing the ground away. It's not us lifting our heart up, it's the energy coming from the ground upper arms and then broaden through our chest and just doing it one more each direction and then coming through to find your tabletop pose sorry I'm just going to fix my hair because the ponytail keeps getting in the way that's the joys of not having a haircut in about three months Right, coming on to your all fours we're going to come into scap dip so I talked at the start about um, to protract our shoulder blades and then pulling them together. So we're just going to do that movement, okay? So we're just going to let our chest drop down and our shoulder blades are going to squeeze together and then we're going to push the ground away, sending them away. So dropping our chest down, shoulder blades come together and then push the ground away to send them away. I'm just going to do a couple more of those just in our own time. So working into our shoulder blades here, really getting that action of using the groin to push us away, broaden that space, keep a really strong back, and then push it away. And then just coming back through to the tabletop, if at any point you need to come off your wrists and give them a wee roll out, that's absolutely fine. So again, still on the tabletop, still really strong. We're going to lift our left leg 
directly behind us. And we're gonna pull our belly button to our, towards our spine. So just feel a nice cat through our front body here. We're gonna inhale here, and then on exhale, we're gonna come into that angry cat back, bring that knee in to our chest, really round your back away. And then reach it back behind us into our tabletop back. Then bring our knee into our chest, crunch it in, and then reach it away. And then one more time, knee into chest. And then reach it away. And then bring that knee back down. So every time we bring your knee into our chest, you should feel like you can't go any further and you want to just lift your knee slightly higher to really feel that engagement. So lifting our right leg back behind us. Inhale here. Exhale, push the ground away, crunch it in. And inhale to reach it back. Exhale to bring it in. And inhale to reach it back. One more time. Exhale, crunch it in. Then inhale, reach it back, then back down to our tabletop, and then just bring yourself back onto the ground. That's just a taster for the core that we're going to do. So you're going to come to lie on your side, just resting on your forearm here. Still thinking of that idea of sending your shoulder blade back. We don't want to be dumping down into our shoulder. You're going to pick up, so if you're on your left leg, we're going to pick up our right leg and just place our right leg in front so our knee is facing towards the sky. Now I have looked up, these are called Jane Fondas. So <laughs> you'll see where we're going. So we want to start to work into um, our hip adductors here. So we're going to flex our left foot. We're going to lift our left foot up, then back down, up and down. We're going to do that for 10 times. So six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then just flipping it over coming on to the other side. So we're working towards this lovely part of our glute on the outside so we can squeeze everything into our midline. So this time, my right foot's on the ground, left foot's up. I'm just going to do 10 of those little lifts. So it should only lift maybe a couple of inches off the ground. Five, four, three, two, one. And then just rolling onto your front, rolling over your ankles, just coming to stand at the top of your mat in your forward fold. So melt it down, so deep bend in our legs here, feet are hip width distance. You can sway from side to side, you start to weaken your hamstrings up a little bit. We're going to inhale to halfway lift, open your chest, exhale to forward fold. Pushing into the ground, inhale, reach your arms up, and then exhale to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back into your plank. Remember your arm placement. Find your arm placement here. Magnetize pubic bone to sternum. Feel your front body light up. Keep that core engagement as we drop our knees. Shift our weight forward. Exhale, keeping our elbows in tight. Lower right all the way down to the mat into our chaturanga. Untuck our toes. Inhale, roll our chin and chest forward to cobra. Ground those feet down. Exhale, push back to all fours. Tuck your toes. Angry cat back as we push back into our downward facing dog. So with our first down dog of the practice, we always just want to take whatever movements our body is craving. If you go into a down dog and you don't want to move, that's absolutely fine. So you'll be pedaling out your feet. Again, bringing some attention to your hands, to your wrists, to your shoulders. Pulling your low tummy up, sending that tailbone up to the sky. Inhale to look forward. Exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, grind your feet down, rise up. Then exhale to forward fold again. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, step back to your plank. Find your core engagement before you drop to your knees. Inhale, shift your weight over your shoulders. Exhale, lowering all the way down. Untuck your toes. Inhale to cobra, squeeze those elbows in, retract the shoulder blades, exhale, push up to your all fours, back to your downward facing dog. Inhaling, looking forward, exhale, step to the front. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale to forward fold. Inhale, reach those arms up, grind down with your feet, then exhale this time, sending your hips back and down, coming into our chair pose. So when we were doing those Jane Fondas, we were working on engaging for the 
outside of our hip. So keep thinking about that part of your body hugging in. Taking one more breath, then exhale, forward fold. Just having your block handy on your right hand side. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, we're gonna step our right foot back, lower your knee down. I'm just gonna grab a blanket to pad up my knee. Inhale to rise up, coming into our low lunge. So squaring off our hips here. Try not to sink too far into that front leg. We don't want there to be a big back bend. Then we're gonna bring our block to the inside edge of our left foot. We're gonna place our left hand on the block, reach our right hand up, coming into a variation side angle. So your tricep and your knee should be nice and connected here. So we talked about isometric contraction. So I want you to think about pushing your knee into your tricep and your tricep back into your knee here. And you're getting even more opening in your, in your hip, but you also get strength building. one more breath here then exhale placing our right hand down twisting out to the left hand side focusing on our wrists and our shoulders and coming back through the center placing your hands in the ground we're just going to put our block just in front of our toes so literally your block should be just touching your toe we're going to tuck our back toes pick it up into our runner's lunge so keeping that squaring off action with the hips now things are going to get spicy. So we're going to place our hands on the block. So your block should be just in front of your feet. And you're going to push your hands into the block so much, rounding through their upper back, that you start to pick up that left foot. Hold it in, then straighten it back into your plank. You can bring your hands back onto the mat, set your block away. Taking one breath here. You're going to pick up that left leg again. Exhale, crunch it in. Rounding through that spine, feel your core engage, reach it back. Now keeping that core engagement, drop to your knees or come, stay with your plank shape, inhale, shoulder to your ears, exhale, lower it all the way down, untuck your toes. Bringing your elbows underneath your shoulders, just going to get into a nice sphinx pose here. So retracting our shoulder blades, opening our chest up. Then exhale, lowering back down to the mat, tucking our toes, pushing back to your downward facing dog. Inhale to look forward, exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale into halfway, exhale, forward fold. Inhale to reach your arms up, and exhale, coming back into our chair, hips back and down. Thinking of that engagement through your legs, pulling your low tummy up. And exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift. Exhale, stepping that left foot back, lower your knee, having your block handy, coming into your low lunge on the other side. Making sure our ribs aren't flaying out here. Then bring our block to the inside edge of our right foot this time. Placing our right hand on the block, spiraling our heart open to the left. Feeling that engagement of our leg and our tricep. So when we come into these isometric contractions, you might feel your body then starts to have little shakes. That's absolutely fine. It just means that the muscles are working and they're strengthening by resisting each other. Taking one more breath. Then exhale, bringing our left hand down, even turning your hand to a slight angle, opening our chest out to the right, coming into a nice twist. coming back through the center bringing the block right in front of your foot so your block and your big toe are probably touching placing our hands onto the block picking up that back foot coming into a variation of runner's lunge here so pushing into the block protracting those shoulder blades so much you can lift your right foot off the ground hover it off the ground then send it back to meet your left foot and coming off the block in your plank picking up that right foot again Exhale, crunching and pulling the knee as close to your face as you can, then sending it back, 
Lower into your knees, your wrists, you're keeping your core nice and tight. Shift shoulders over your wrists, exhale, lowering all the way down your halfway, untucking your toes, coming into your up dog. And exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Taking a couple of breaths here, if you find that you're, you maybe lost your breath as you started to get deep into the core, just trying to lengthen out again. And your next inhale, lifting the left leg up behind you. Exhale, bringing that knee into your chest, keeping it there, then placing our left foot down in the mat, turning our back foot to 90, rising up, coming into our warrior two. So making sure our shoulders are nice and away from our ears, so our neck is nice and long. Grinding down to the knife edge of your pinky toe and your right foot. Deep bend in that left leg and making sure our left knee isn't falling into the right. Grabbing your block if you wish, placing it to the inside edge of your left foot, bringing your left hand down, coming into our side angle. And if the ground is within reach, you can bring the block lower or take it away, you're welcome to. But making sure we're keeping our chest nice and open here and keeping that engagement of our tricep and our knee. Taking one more breath, then exhale, bringing that right hand down. We're gonna spin on our back foot, so we're coming into a twisted runner's lunge. Then bringing our left hand down, coming into our runner's lunge, you can just place your block just over to the side. Then squeezing your outer hips in, really engaging through the legs, finding the strength to rise up into our high crescent lunge. But we're gonna bring our hands through to prayer, so just through to heart center, keeping our chest nice and open, squeezing everything in. And we're just gonna hop our back foot just in a couple inches, just so we shorten the stance. And we're going to move into warrior three, but when we move into warrior th three, I want you to think about this idea of our weight tipping forward. So as our weight comes forward, our back leg almost glides up. So doing it really slowly. So dropping your chest over your left leg, keeping a nice bend in your left leg just to start as your right leg starts to rise up behind you. Coming into your warrior three. Keeping your hands just at heart center for this. Back toes are pointing down towards the earth. And then as if you're moving through treacle, really slowly tipping your weight back up, bringing your right knee up in front of your chest. Still balancing on that left leg. And then we're gonna come into eagle legs here. So we're gonna cross our right leg over our left, just like we were sitting at a dinner table, and then sinking our hips down, just like we did in our chair. Keeping your hands at heart center, and I really want you to think about pushing our hands together so you're broadening the space behind your heart. And then again, as if you're moving through treacle, just re bleh, re straightening that leg. And if you can, coming back through into your warrior three, and then bending our knee, dropping down, coming into our runner's lunge. Very good guys, if you fell out of it, it's absolutely fine. The trick is you just wanna do it as slow as you can because the faster you do it, this means your brain doesn't have time to tell your body how to keep its balance. So placing our hands onto the mat, stepping back into your plank. This time you're gonna do a cross body crunch. So lifting our left leg up behind us, we're gonna bring our left leg to our right tricep. We're gonna spin our back foot so it's at 90 degrees, so just like warrior two back feet. We're gonna kick our left leg out to the side and then lift our right arm up. This is called fallen triangle. So it's like a variation of our side plank. So lifting our hips up really high. Take one more breath there. Then exhale, bringing our right hand down, going back into our downward facing dog. 
and taking a couple of breaths here, just like we always do in between clothes. Before we come to the front of our mat, we're going to tiptoe, but I want you to think as you tiptoe, you're literally taking tiny, tiny steps. You're going to pull your belly button right up to your spine, sit bones are going to shine up and you're really going to push the ground away. Just taking one more inhale in your down dog, and in your next exhale, taking as many steps, as many breaths as you need to, straighten those legs, push the ground away, find the space in your back, pull your belly button to your spine, see how far you can go before you need to lift your hands. And exhaling into your forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift. And exhaling to forward fold. You're going to place your block about six inches in front of your feet. So it should just be, if you came into a halfway lift, the block should be just directly under your feet. Now, if you have two blocks, you can bring two blocks. I only have one. <laughs> I've got loads more in like the studio, but I only have one of them. So your block is gonna come basically directly underneath your face. We're gonna place our hands onto the block. Now, as you know, your hands are now on the ground. So we're gonna be doing all those three actions that we talked about. So that suction cup, our fingers as wide as you can get them. I know it's a bit limiting on the block and our biceps are gonna come forward. And we're just gonna slowly start to lift up on our pinky toes. So our weight is coming into our hands. We're really pushing the ground away and then rolling back down. So if you feel the weight come into your pinky toes, you immediately want your core to light up and you want to push that ground away. And then coming back down onto your heels and doing that one more time. Rolling forward, feel that weight go into your hands, broaden the space in your upper back, then exhale to drop it away. Just setting your block off to the side. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, step back into your plank. Shift your weight forward. Keep that engagement as your core as you lower all the way down or halfway down. Untuck the toes. Inhale to your up dog or your cobra. Then exhale back to your downward facing dog. Inhale to lift that right leg up behind you. Exhale, crunching our right foot in as much as you can, placing it in between our hands. Back foot spins down to 90, rising up into our warrior two. So if you need to take any kind of small movements to get your alignment correct, go on ahead. Keeping that right hip tucked under. Then bringing our block to the inside edge of our right foot. Placing our right hand onto the block, spiraling our heart up to the left hand side. So you want to keep both sides of our wakes nice and long here. So if you bring your hand down to the earth and your right side body's all crumpled up, let the earth come a little bit higher up to you. You want to keep space in the body. Finding that engagement of our tricep with our um, thigh. And again, squeezing them together. Feel those little shapes in the bird. Then exhale, bring your left hand wide, spinning to your the ball of your back foot, opening your chest out to the right hand side. Coming back into your runner's lunge. We're just briefly taking runner's lunge so we can find the strength in our legs to then inhale up to our high crescent lunge. Just making sure our tailbone's tucked nice and under here so if you're, you feel like your chest is coming too far forward, bend your back leg, let your tailbone come down and then re straighten that leg. Bring your hands through the heart center. Now we're going to do the same as we did on the other side. So we're going to come into our Warrior three into our lead eagle back in to our warrior three. Falling is human. <laughs> so just bringing that back foot in a little touch. Again, this seesaw action of slowly as our chest comes forward, deep bend in that right leg still, our back leg starts to float now. Floating? That's not a word, Jade. <laughs> starts to float up. We're squeezing those outer hips in, our back foot's reaching behind us. And we have almost like a cobra back with our chest here, so nice and open. And then slowly bringing ourselves up to stand as we bring our left knee in line with our hip. Keeping your hands at heart center. 
and then crossing that left leg over our right, sinking our hips down, coming into our eagle. So it's almost like a chair pose, but our legs are crossed. Some people can wrap their toes around their calf. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> My body is not built to do that. And as our hands throughout our heart center, really think about pushing our hands together, creating space in our back body. Feeling our right glute engage here, squeezing those legs together. Then inhale, come back up, knee in line with our hip. Then again, moving really slowly, tipping our weight forward, coming back into our warrior three, bending into that right knee as we drop ourselves back down. Bring your hands onto the earth, so we're going to runner's lunge, and then stepping that right foot back, coming into your plank. Finding that engagement with your wrists and your shoulders. We're gonna do a cross body crunch this time. So our right knee is gonna to come to our left tricep. So lifting our right foot back up, finding your balance, then exhale, crunching that right knee into our left tricep, turning our back foot to warrior two back feet, then kicking our right foot out to the side. So into our fallen triangles, being really wary of your shoulder and your wrist placement on your right hand side. Taking one more breath here, then exhale, bringing your left hand down, stepping back to our warrior two. Not warrior two, downward facing dog, not really. Taking a couple of breaths here. Then we're going to do that tiptoe action again. So pulling belly to spine, taking tiny, tiny steps, lifting your hips as high up as you can. You want to try and walk yourself in as much as you can before you need to lift your hands off the ground. If you were talking like me, your voice should go a bit funny by the time you get the end. <laughs> then we're going to bring our block again, directly underneath our face. Hands are going to come onto the block. Feet are flat on the earth. And we're going to do those rocks again. So together we're just going to rock forward, both feet are going to stay in the earth, coming up under our pinky toes, push the mat away, belly above the spine, and lower it back down. And you're welcome to do exactly that again. So rock forward, up into your pinky, pinky toes, baby toes, and then maybe lift your right leg up, and then lower it back down, then lower both heels down. Then rock forward, push the ground away, then maybe lift your left leg up, bring it back down, lower it down, and exhale there. Place your blocks inside, inhale to halfway lift, then exhale, just stepping back into your downward facing dog. Then bringing your knees nice and wide, just taking child's pose for a couple of breaths. So forehead down to the mat. If you want to even bring, just to give your shoulder to relax, bring your hands alongside your feet. And just know this pose is completely passive, not holding on to anything, just really let your body have a wee rest. Again, just taking stock of this path that we're taking through our class today. Maybe you might have clocked what the final destination is. I hate saying that term, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe you know where we're going, maybe you don't know where we're going, but just, just enjoying these steps that we're taking to get there and knowing that these steps that you're taking are beneficial towards the end, but the end isn't always necessarily the goal. We don't have to reach the end. We can still stay on this journey for as long as we want. And then your time to slowly bring yourself up, just coming to sit on your heels. And then we're just gonna curtsy yourself just out to the side. And then we're gonna to come to lie on our back. So you're gonna bring your right knee into your chest. Just grab your right knee, pull it really far into your chest. Then you're gonna straighten your right arm and you're gonna bring your right arm to the inside of your leg. So you're gonna flex your fingers back towards your face and you're gonna bring so your tricep and your knee are engaged. I'm going to talk about that isometric contraction. So you're going to push your knee into your arm, your arm into your knee. And then inhale, we're going to straighten our arm and our leg away from one another, keeping your left leg just planted on the ground. 
Exhale, bring them in, find that connection, push them together. Stay for an inhale, stay for an exhale, then reach them away from one another. One more time on this side, really crunch that knee as far as you can, maybe you lift your hips slightly, find that engagement, make sure you're not pushing onto your elbow joint here, so if you need to do it on your forearm, you can. And then exhale, to straighten it out. Then bring both feet onto the mat, we're just gonna mix it up, do it on the other side. So hug your left knee into your chest as much as you can. If your tailbone rolls a little bit off the mat, that's fine. Just as long as it's not causing any issues in your lower back. So you're going to bring either your left forearm or your left tricep, whichever one's accessible for you. You're going to flex your fingers back towards your face and you're going to squeeze your knee and your arm together. And then exhale, straighten them away. Then inhale, bring them in together. Stay for the exhale in this, in this shape. Stay for the inhale. Then exhale to straighten them out one more time. So really feel that resistance. Feel those tiny quivers in the cheeks. And exhale to reach your back and bring both knees into your chest. Just give yourself a quick hug. And then I'm just gonna do a couple of little rocks and rolls along the spine, rolling over your ankles, just coming to all fours. And then we're gonna drop ourselves down, so like we were in our Sphinx pose, so our elbows are directly underneath our shoulders and you should just be able to touch your elbows with your opposite hand here. Now the same idea with our shoulders and our hands here. So hands are really wide, weight distribution, really ground down through your fingers here. We're gonna puff up the space between our shoulder blades so almost like you're doing a cat back, but you've got your forearms on the ground. We're then going to tuck our toes, and then we're going to push into our hips and lift up into our dolphin. So I really want you to think about sending your tailbone up to the sky and your face as far away from the ground as you can. You should really feel kind of your armpits hollowing out here. Pull your belly button to your spine. Take one more breath, then exhale, lowering your knees down, just dropping back into child's pose. Then just tucking your toes, coming into a quick down dog, straight stretching on our back, looking to the front of your back, bat, bat set forward, coming into your forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift and exhaling to forward fold. And you're gonna bring your block, you know, I need a bit of balance for this one. You're gonna stand on your block. And then you're gonna to come to squat down. So your knees are out to the side and you're up on the balls of your feet. So your heels and your bum are almost touching. So we're gonna come into, drum roll, crow pose. We're gonna come into a variation of crow pose though. So we're going to take on board everything that we've just run through in class. So this idea of our really stable shoulders, our hugging everything in, this idea of our knee and our triceps squeezing together and our really stable shoulders. And it's really important that space gets really puffy. So we're standing up on our blocks. This just gives us a little bit of a height advantage. You're going to bring your hands down onto the mat. So they're just going to be shoulder width and you're going to turn them slightly out to the side. Now, if you come here and this is enough for you, that's absolutely fine. You can stay here and you can just rock back and forth, feeling that knee catch onto the outside edge of your tricep. Now, we are gonna come back into crow a little bit later in class, so if you don't wanna go for it fully now, that's fine. So just rocking back and forth, maybe gradually lifting your hips up a little bit higher, taking on board everything that we've gone through in class. And then maybe if you come forward and you find the pose, just staying there, puffing the ground away. Maybe you lift one foot and drop it back down, lift the other foot and then come back. So you just play about with this pose for a little bit. And when we think about our gaze, we don't want to lift our head too high here. We want to keep our spine nice and neutral. So just looking kind of out the end of your nose. So you're just doing a couple of rocks here. You might feel the top of your back start to really fire up. And then when you're done with that, 
just come off your block as gracefully as you can and we're just going to roll back onto our mat hugging our knees in taking a couple of rolls in the spine here taking a couple of breaths just to re-engage maybe running through all those key actions we spoke about again so we're going to come this time into our crow pose but on our back so you're going to bring both knees to the outside edges of your arms now if you're only able to do it onto your forearm when you're on your back that's absolutely fine this one just focus on everything squeezing in so engaging with our arms and our legs pushing them away from one another And then exhale, reaching our hands and feet away. Then inhale, bringing them back in. Stay for the exhale. Stay for the inhale. Then reaching them back one more time. I know your abs are singing at me. Finding that resistance. And then placing our feet onto the mat. Doing a couple of rocks and rolls here. Rolling over your ankles. Coming back onto our all fours. We're going to take that dolphin pose again, which can do a little more variation. Now, if you at any point don't want to take it a step further, you can always do the step we've done beforehand. So, if you'd rather come into down dog, you can come into down dog. If you want to come with dolphin with me, you just follow. So, we're coming into down onto our forearms, elbows onto our shoulders, grinding our hands into the mat. Doing our protraction, our cat back, tucking our toes under, lifting our hips up. And then we're just going to lift our right leg up. Squeezing our hips together so we keep our legs like a pair of scissors. And then drop our right leg down. Then lift our left leg up. Keep pushing the ground away from your face. Drop your left leg down. Drop onto your knees. Coming back into your child's pose. Then tucking your toes, just coming into your downward facing dog. You can have a deep bend in your legs here. Keep it a nice restorative down dog. Just so you can find your breath. And look to the front of the mat, step forward. Coming into your forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift. And exhaling to forward fold. And then just grabbing our block again, we're going to have another opportunity to play with our crow pose. So if you even want to come into that um, forward fold rocks that we were doing, you can come into that. If you feel you still need to work a little bit on your wrist strength, on your um, shoulder strength, that's absolutely fine. Or you can come to play. I like to use the word play. <laughs> it takes a seriousness out of it. Um, in your crow. So standing on your block, coming high up onto your toes, your heels are going to come together to touch, hands are going to place on the mat. And again, you can just do these nice little rocks where you slowly work to get your hips a little bit higher. But before you come in, just taking a quick run through of what we want to achieve here. So we want to pull our belly back to the spine, we want to hug our other hips in, squeeze our knees into our shoulder blades, keep our gaze nice and neutral, create space in our back body. Just take a moment to get all that information into your head. It's like a school lesson, this. Pushing the ground away, bringing your knees, and then maybe lifting one foot, maybe lifting the other foot. And if you've got it, remember to breathe, and then slowly tip yourself back out of it. Maybe give your wrist a wee bit of a roll. This is your time to play with it, so you don't need to go with what I'm doing. You can go through all the stages yourself. But this idea of tipping our weight forwards, remember we came into our um, Warrior 3. We were going like really slowly as if you're going through treacle. So as you feel your knees start to connect with your triceps, then you start to slowly lift your hips as the weight starts to come forward. And then if you're done playing with that, just exhale, just come into, just come into a slightly wider forward fold, bring your feet mat width distance, we're sort of swaying from side to side. 
letting your arms just relax. So I am sure you all did amazingly there. And then walking our feet back together so they're under our hips. We're going to inhale to halfway lift, exhale to forward fold. Inhale, grind into the ground, reach your hands up. Exhale, hands through the heart center. And just to counteract that balance that we did in our hands, we're just going to do a nice little balance on our feet. So bringing your hands to your hips, grinding down to the left foot, picking up our right knee, opening out to the right, placing our right foot on the inside edge of our left leg, just coming into a nice tree pose. So if you, this, I want this to be a little bit more restorative, so if putting your leg, whoop, like me, putting your leg too high means that you're going to lose balance, just bring your foot so it's kind of on your calf muscle. And then exhale, bring that foot back down to the earth. Shake out your left leg if you want. And then this time, bring your left knee up to your chest, opening your knee out to the side, and just bringing your foot just somewhere on the inside edge of your right leg, just making sure it's not on your knee joint. Just finding that nice counterbalance from putting the weight onto our wrists and balancing ourselves from the top down, now we're balancing from the down up. And exhale, bringing your foot back down, reaching our hands up on an inhale, last big stretch, then exhaling to forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling, step back onto our all fours. And then just dropping our chest down, just coming into our cow pose, just holding this for a couple of breaths. Just counteracting all that pushing we've been doing. Then coming back through to neutral, sinking ourselves down onto our heels. Now we are going to come into um, some camel rolls, so if you want to just pad up your knees if you want. I forgot to say, the reason why we had the cushion was in case you wanted to place a cushion under your face for crow pose, so apologies, I forgot to mention that. Um, just some people have that slight fear, which is completely understandable. Um, so if you did, if you want to try it again after class, because you had the fear, you can place a cushion just underneath your face. Um, so we're just going to come into sink on your heels, we're going to come into camel pose here. So just bringing your right hand just to the base of your back on an inhale, we're going to reach our left arm up behind us, keeping that elbow squeezing in towards the midline. Just coming into a slight back bend, taking a couple of breaths here, then exhale, sinking our hips back down, reaching this time with our right hand, left hand comes to the small of our back. And we're reaching our chest up and then curling from behind the heart. Then bringing ourselves back down. If you feel like you do have the openness, you can bring your hand onto your heel and then reach out through the left hand side. And if you do that, think about sending your hips far forward. And like I said, the chest, it's more important that your chest comes up than it goes back. Creating loads of space here. We're closed in on our chest a lot, so now it's our opportunity to open it up. And exhale, dropping back down. Maybe grabbing your hip or bringing your hand to the small of your back. Reaching our hips up. Allowing our front body to have a little bit of expression. Allowing our core to open up instead of contract. And exhaling to come down. Ooh, nice little knee crack from me there. And then you're just going to slither yourself forward. We're just going to come into a nice sphinx pose here. So bringing your arms so that they're in a slight angle for this one. So your hands should be facing 10 and 2. Rolling your shoulder blades back. Even dropping our head down in front, doing some neck rolls. You can bring your feet mat width distance if it feels a little bit nippy on your low back. Letting our breath just return to its normal pattern. And 
then just lowering down to the mat just so we can place our hands to push ourselves back up and then you're going to come to sit on your mat both legs are going to be out in front you're going to bring our right foot just to the outside edge of our left knee here and we're just going to actually hug our leg in so sometimes we hook our elbow racks you're going to hug so let your chest come towards that right knee hug your left arm in and then twist a little bit so we want this idea of we want to get a nice stretch all along our scaps there our scaps our scaps that's all right Thinking about sending your shoulder your shoulders away from one another. Just lightly twisting out to the right. So we haven't done too many twists in class today, so just being really gentle with your body. This is the nice cool down at the end, so we don't want to be taking our body anywhere it already has to try taking our body further than anywhere it's already been. Inhale to come through to center, and then just swapping that up, left foot, then bringing our chest into our that leg, hugging our right arm around it. Finding a bit of a twist before we bring our left hand down behind us. If it's too far away, you can even place your hand on a block if you wish. And just sending those shoulders away from one another, keeping our neck nice and long. Slightly pulling our belly in just so we can twist that bit deeper. And you'll feel behind your right shoulder blade nice and stretching out. And then slowly exhaling out through that. And then you're just going to bring your legs into a nice straddle here. Toes are going to be trying to point them behind you. We're going to make this super restorative, so we're just going to fold in. Not making our back nice and straight. When we say restorative, it basically means you don't need to put anything into it. So you don't need to think about your chest being open or anything. Just coming to a place where you can almost relax in this pose while you feel your tailbone down to the earth. You curl your head forward and start to feel your spine lengthen out. Feeling a nice opening along the inner seams of your legs. You're letting your shoulder blades protract here, but unlike the rest of class, we aren't actively pushing them into the ground. Feeling that breath run up and down the length of your spine. And walking your hands back through to centre and then just bringing yourself onto your back, placing both feet onto the mat. Now we're going to cross our right ankle just above our left knee, coming into this reclined, reclined pigeon. So right knee is going to be coming towards the front of the mat. And then if you would pick up that left knee, so bring your left knee into our chest, and then looping our hands through that little triangle shape, making our legs just grabbing behind our thigh while our shoulders rest heavy onto the earth. So getting a nice little opening in our right hip here. Just letting our ankles hang. You can even do some rolls on your ankle if you can, just to ease them off because we did come into our ankles before we came into our crow. So. Just in these last stages of class, just maybe going through all the things that you picked up along the way. Thinking about maybe you reached the end of your journey, maybe you're still on the way there, but knowing that even if you are still on the way there, you know that you've learned so much to get to where you are. knowing if you forever stay where you are that's absolutely fine that's a good safe place to be and just dropping our left foot onto the mat just turning your hips slightly over to the right as we drop our right foot down just coming into a nice 
Just do find a twist here, maybe letting your gaze fall to the right hand side if that's comfortable. Bringing your arms out either side. So the journey that we took in class today was towards a pose at the end, but by going through that journey in class, you cultivated so much strength. You absorb so much knowledge. So you should be thankful to your mind and your body for everything that it's done to take you on it today. Then bringing your knees up through center and then just crossing it up, left ankle above the right knee. Finding that opening, then lifting your right knee into your chest. Maybe giving your ankles a couple of circles. Letting your breath just breathe naturally. Maybe taking a couple more sighs if you think it'll be beneficial. Deeply listening to what your body's craving. And dropping our right foot onto the mat, shimming your hips over to the left, left foot down to the earth. And this time maybe try opening your arms just above your head so that the palms of your hands are spinning up towards the ceiling. Trying to make our arms really heavy so our elbows and our wrists, our shoulders are grinding down. Giving our chest some space. Making sure that you're getting a, a full body holistic yoga sequence. You're not walking around with your shoulder blades protracted for the rest of the day. And inhaling, bringing yourself back to your center, uncrossing your legs. And then just taking any final poses that you wish to take before you come into your Shavasana. So if you want to take a happy baby or a couple of bridges, you can. Just taking about five breaths. Maybe you want to hug your knees into your chest or lowering yourself down to Shavasana. So just straightening your legs out so they're at least mat width. Letting your hands fall open towards the sky. If you have a blanket and you want to put it over yourself, you can. Making sure our shoulder blades are down our back, creating space for our neck. And even though we're not practicing together, we can still be together. So everyone's just going to take a really deep inhale. Fill up your lungs, hold it at the top. And then exhale, release a sigh. As you sink heavily down into your mat, imagine there's someone just laying a really heavy blanket on you. Just letting your body Find some stillness, earn its reward with deep relaxation after all the strength and the work that it, it did for you during class, not just physically but mentally, all that knowledge that you gained and then just find some peace. 